Hi, Dr. Bonholtz, Bonholtz Plastic Surgery, and this is the next video in the series about um, Bonholtz Talks Botched, Bonholtz Talks Botched, how about that, gotta get through the sentence, where we uh, delve into the topic of uh, what is perceived or properly called uh, botched plastic surgery. We've already talked about what uh, the definition of that might be, meaning uh, either an unhappy patient or an uh, unfavorable outcome or buyer's remorse or um, just expectations that were not in keeping with with uh, with what was re uh, reasonable. Um, today we're going to talk about uh, the surgeon factors that go into uh, sort of limiting or mitigating um, um, uh, botched uh, surgery or surgery that uh, that involves any of those uh, characteristics. If you see me looking down, it's because I've got some notes, and I want to make sure that we we copy or tackle these uh, these topics. All right. So first and foremost, of course. Uh, let's talk about the surgical factors uh, or the surgeon factors, and those are uh, you want to go to a board-certified uh, plastic surgeon. Now, typically in the first year following completion of training, right, a surgeon is not board-certified. That doesn't make them a bad surgeon. doesn't mean it's not someone um, you shouldn't go to. Certainly my first year of practice, I was not uh, board-certified. I mean, board-certified in general surgery at the time, but I was not board-certified in plastic surgery. And the reason for that is because... Um, part of the American Board of Plastic Surgery's uh, certification process is it collects uh, the work you do in your first year, and that becomes the basis, or part of the basis at least, for your examination in plastic surgery. Um, so you make sure that someone is either um, going to become a board-certified plastic surgeon, which is completely different than um, folks who are calling themselves board-certified cosmetic surgeons. So a cosmetic surgeon, by definition, is not the same thing as a plastic surgeon. Their training is, is uh, I don't even want to comment on that right now, but it is not the breadth and depth uh, of plastic surgery. So um, my recommendation to you is we want you to go to someone that is board certified by the American Board of Plastic Surgery or they're in their collection period for the American Board of Plastic Surgery. Um, once they've completed their uh, plastic surgery certification, uh, they'll be eligible to become members of uh, the major societies, ASPS, the American Society of Plastic Surgery, and then there's the Aesthetic Society, um, which is typically offered uh, as a possible uh, membership route a little bit later. So someone that is board certified, a member of both ASPS and ASAPS, um, generally uh, you're going to be off to a great start. Uh, next, uh, people often ask me, how many of a given procedure have I done? Uh, my response invariably is, how many do you think I need to do to be competent at this? And so the answer would surprise a lot of people. It's, it's it, you know, um, plastic surgery is a, is a discipline of um, procedures and techniques, um, not so much, I'm sorry, is a, a discipline of techniques, not so much the procedures. So again, um, we learn techniques, whereas um, maybe my, um, I don't wanna pick up my orthopedic colleagues or my, um, even when I was a general surgeon, you know, there's only so many ways to do a gallbladder, there's only so many ways to do a broken wrist. Um, at the end of the day, um, what plastic surgeons are particularly gifted at is uh, you look at a problem and you break it into its smaller pieces, and even if you haven't done the entire problem before, you've definitely done those different pieces. So I think a better question to ask the surgeon is, are you comfortable doing this case? A, a immediate corollary to that question is, have you uh, managed the complications um, that are associated with doing this particular procedure? Because it's one thing to go try to do a procedure that you may not have done, that's actually okay, we just talked about why, um, but are you comfortable and competent managing uh, the complications? Um, I will say over and over again, um, the only surgeons that don't have complications uh, lie or they don't do enough surgery. So um, all surgeons have the uh, capacity to have a, a, a complication and all surgeries have the capacity to have uh, risk. Okay, um, so then other ways to look at your surgery or surgeon-related factors are look at the reviews. Uh, what are other people uh, saying about that particular surgeon? Um, take it with a grain of salt, um, both the, the ones at the high end and the low end, um, but sort of look at what the average um, you know, feel is about the surgeon. Of course, it has to do with your interaction and your feeling with that surgeon at that time. Um, the most important thing I think I do with my patients when they come to see me is I manage expectations, right? So that a successful outcome for me and my practice is where the patient and I are traveling along sort of the same pathway with the same end goal in mind, and we have reasonable expectations about what the surgery can do for them in their body, in their with their genetics and their healing capabilities and their skin type and and whether they're a you know they've got medical issues or not and all of those factors that go into uh, being a good doctor and a good surgeon and and um, and maximizing the the benefit for the patient uh, so that we have good reasonable expectations. 
That is an overview of the surgeon factors that go into uh, mitigating or decreasing um, what we might consider as botched plastic surgery. Um, stay tuned, there'll be some upcoming videos where we're gonna talk about patient factors, we're gonna talk about facility factors, and then we'll get into some more details, some more specific stories. Have an awesome day.